Hey, welcome to another video. In this one, I'd like to compare a converted camera for infrared versus a camera using the Hoya 72 filter versus just taking a black and white photo. For this test, what I'm going to use is the Nikon D50 camera Nikon Z7 II camera, the 20 millimeter S lens. I went out yesterday and scouted three different locations. One is going to be sort of a landscape with a lake and a tree, which I've shot before in the first uh, infrared video I did. If you haven't watched that one, you go back and check that one out. The second one is going to be of a, a little wooden bridge and the third is going to be of a church so it'll be mostly a stationary object and the reason why I picked those three locations is because one the first one will have possibly a lot of wind blowing and the being able to stop the shutter speed the second will have some foliage but it will also have a stationary object in the bridge and the third will be mostly stationary of a building. The object isn't really to prove that the converted camera is better because I'm unless something amazing happens that I'm not expecting I already know the converted camera is going to be better if it's a big if you're going to do a lot of infrared photography. What I'm really trying to find out is how close is it really? Is it really worth the upgrade as opposed to just using the Hoya filter? That I'm really not sure about. I know you have to use the longer shutter speeds. And I know in this experiment, I'm using a crop camera versus a full frame camera. I'm fully aware of the differences of that. One's roughly a 20 megapixel camera and one's roughly a 45 megapixel camera. I'm aware of those differences. But again, it's more to see during processing, can we get pretty close between using the filter, which is going to be on the Z7 II, versus a camera that's already been converted, which is this little Z50 here. And don't, don't sell this Z50 short. This is a fine little camera. So that's the experiment. I'm going to shoot everything at ISO 100. So let's go to the first location, and I'll see you in just a minute or two. We're at the first composition. And for anyone who saw my first video on infrared, yes, it's the same tree. And again, the reason why I picked this specifically is because in that first video, when I was using the filter, and I had to use a longer shutter speed, it was really difficult to get those leaves up there intact. And of course, any landscape photographer that shoots around water knows that after that sun comes up, a lot of time you're gonna get a little bit of wind. So it's you have to use longer shutter speeds and you just can't if you're using the Hoya filter unless you really pump that ISO, which I don't I don't necessarily want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the infrared camera and I'll record for you the shutter speed. But again, I'll probably use aperture f4 or 5.6 here. And whichever one I use, I'll use it for all three images. The infrared, the filter, and just a plain color image that I converted to black and white. So here we go. I'm back at the computer and I have the first three images up, the first composition. Each one is with the 20 millimeter lens. Each one is shot at f5.6. Unfortunately, I goofed on the first color shot. I shot it at ISO 64. I don't think it's going to make that big a difference. <clears throat> but the other one was shot at ISO 100. This is what you see in the viewfinder. You see that as well. And the same, of course, when you 
look for your viewfinder on a regular camera, that's what you're going to see. Once you put the filter on, that's what you're going to see. And you can see it was a 30 second exposure and you can already see, uh, you know, the, those leaves just are not going to be sharp at all. The wind was blowing a little bit. doesn't take much of a wind and, you know, that's out of. The other thing I want to point out to you is look at the temperature as shot. This one here, what you have to do. This one, I actually have, I actually have a profile for it, which will change it somewhat to start out but I have a, a profile designed for the Z7 II so I'm going to use that to start gets rid of some of the red and you can see how the color temperature changed now there's plenty of videos on that on YouTube if you want to learn more about that and also how to switch the red and the blue channels which also helps when you're doing black and white but those are the three i'll show you how i ended up in the end and let's see if in particular this one and that one despite the leaves moving if in processing we can get it close and then what the differences are between just changing over to a plain black and white difference between what you'll get in infrared versus black and white all right be back <laughs> I'm at the second location here at the bridge so I again shot it at f6 just to try to keep the shutter speeds down a little bit with the 10 stop Hoya filter I had to shoot it at 30 seconds the same as the other composition and the uh, converted camera I could shoot at 1 500th of a second so obviously there's going to be movement in the leaves that you're going to see with the filter that you're not going to see hopefully with the much faster shutter speed I also moved back slightly in this image with the Z50 to try to get the same composition all right off to the third one before I go any further I usually forget to ask to if you like what I'm doing a like and subscribe it kind of encourages me to do more videos like this I sure appreciate it. And also, go take a look uh, at my website, michael-cantwell.com. You'll also find my books there. I write books as well as taking photos. So I'd appreciate it if you get a moment. Just go over there and take a second and take a look. Here's the second image. This is the converted camera. Now, these are the raw files straight out of the camera. Here's straight out of the camera. The regular with no filter and obviously there's the Hoya filter on the Z7 II. I will again make the adjustment to get the profiles and try to get it as close as possible but there are some images that like this this just isn't really a, a composition for black and white photography I get that it's really designed more for infrared like this so I understand that, but I just wanted to show you what the stark difference is between an infrared type image and straight out of color. So when you're looking for your compositions, sometimes you have to think in terms of black and white versus infrared. It's From what I'm finding in my limited experience, it's very different. All right, I'll be back with the converted images in just a moment. I did go and photograph the third location. However, both images were very similar. They had a very muted blue sky and a lot of white in them. I didn't see a whole lot of difference. The uh, camera with the Hoya filter was a little bit darker than the converted camera. So I didn't bother to put the final on both. I'll put the one up 
platform, the Z50, the converted camera, so that you can see it. Both of them were pretty similar. So what did we find out? In the end, the Hoya filter, I believe, does hold up very well against a converted camera, as long as you can deal with the long shutter speeds. I think that you'll miss a lot of images if something is moving or if you want things tack sharp, you'll miss things with the Hoya filter because of the long, longer shutter speeds. So I think that's the, the big difference. I also think that there's a slight color variation, at least between the camera, the converted camera that I have versus using the filter. You can't expect them to be exactly the same. I mean, one has a filter in the camera, one has a filter on the lens. You're using different sensors. I never expected them to be the same, but I am pleasantly surprised at how close you can get them. But there, but there are differences. So I hope you learned something. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And until next time, take good care of yourself.